Today we're going to talk about searching for the will and understanding the will if your loved one has it. I'm Nick from Estates Plus and I'm a lawyer and also a cremation coordinator and I hope this video is helpful for you. If your loved one passed away, one of the early steps that you should do is to find out if they have a will. Now, even if you're certain that your loved one never created a will, it's still really important to double check and make sure that there is not a will. So the first thing you should do is to conduct thorough searches to make sure that there isn't a will. And some of the places that you should search for are, first of all, search through your loved one's personal papers. Uh, go through their filing cabinet, go into their, you know, get a, lex a locksmith to open their house and, uh, and see if you can find one. You should also check with the public trustee in your state. The public trustees in every state often have will banks, which are places that people can store their will for safekeeping. So contact them and make sure that your loved one didn't store their will in a will bank. There's also an organization called the Australian Wills Registry, which is an online database that allows people to register their will. So have a look there. Check with friends and family. Check with any lawyers or accountants that your loved one used. Check with the bank to see if there's any safety deposit boxes. Determining if a will exists is important because a will sets out how the estate of your loved one will be divided. And if your loved one had a will, obviously the beneficiaries in the will will be entitled to their assets. But if your loved one did not have a will, then your loved one's assets will be divided according to something called the rules of intestacy. The rules of intestacy are the autom automatic way that someone's possessions and assets and estate, it's called, is divided among the closest family members when they die without a will. So if you, for example, think there's no will and you don't do proper searches and the estate ends up being divided according to the rules of intestacy, then if there is a will and you didn't properly check, then the wrong people will be receiving the inheritance and the people mentioned in the will could miss out. That's why it's important to do proper checks. So let's go into a little bit more and discuss what exactly is a will. So a will, for it to be legal, has to be in writing and signed or somehow adopted by the deceased person. A, a will technically needs to be signed and witnessed by two witnesses for it to be valid. But a will can also be valid if it doesn't quite meet the formal requirements of the will, e.g. being signed and witnessed by two witnesses. It can still be valid and classified as an informal will as long as the document or any other recording, such as a video, conveys a clear message that the deceased person intended to divide their assets in a certain way. A will is a legal document that sets out how someone's assets are divided in the event of death. A will can also deal with other issues such as express wishes on how their funeral is to occur, also express uh, instructions on who will be the legal guardian of children under 18. A will also nominates an executor. An executor is the person who will be responsible for doing all the paperwork and administrative affairs, basically the executor will collect all the assets, pay the debts and distribute the, the, the leftover proceeds to the beneficiaries under the will. So that's what a will does. For a will to be legal, it has to be signed by the deceased person and witnessed by two adults. Now, if the will that you have doesn't meet these formal requirements, then there's a possibility it can still be legally binding, even if it doesn't if it's not signed or witnessed properly. Uh, there is a mechanism where a will that doesn't quite meet the, the technical requirements can still be classified as an informal will and will have the same effect as a legally signed will. So a will 
will usually appoint an executor. And the person appointed as executor will be responsible for finalizing the estate and doing all the administrative tasks. So the executor usually will need to go and collect the assets. So, you know, close bank accounts, um, uh, sell assets, put the proceeds of sale into the estate bank account, go collect the superannuation funds, go collect the bank account funds, go and collect any money that's owed elsewhere from the ATO. Um, and then the executor will usually sell these off or distribute them according to the terms of the will. The executor also have to pay off debtors of the estate. Uh, so the executor has all these administrative duties to do uh, and they're the ones that are in charge and, and they represent the estate. So an executor will be the representative of the deceased estate. Another thing to bear in mind is to check whether there is a codicil. So a codicil is an amendment made to a will. So you have the original will and then a codicil will change some term of that will. And a codicil also has to be signed and witnessed in the same way. Not everyone has a codicil. Um, some people, when they change their will, they will just do a completely new will and not do a codicil. So don't be too concerned if you can't find the codicil. Another thing to bear in mind is that you'll need the original will in most cases. So if you need to apply for probate, and probate is the process where the will is examined and reviewed by the Supreme Court and then a formal permission is given to the executor. Uh, if you need probate, and you will need to lodge the original will with the Supreme Court or the probate office. If you can, cannot find the original will and you only have a copy, then that's still okay, but you have to explain that you're confident that this copy of the will is in fact the, or the true copy and there isn't some other version of the will out there and you have to explain why you can't find the original. The other thing to bear in mind about wills is that when you find the will, uh, it's a good idea to make a copy of it, but when you're doing it, making a copy, make sure you don't disturb the will in any way. So don't remove any paper clips, don't remove any staples, keep the will in its original condition. The reason is, if you disturb the will and start removing paper clips, then it may look like someone tried to tamper with the will and the, the Supreme Court or the probate office might ask questions about the state of the will if you start disturbing it. So the best thing is just to keep the will in its original bindings and just take a photo of it from far away and that can be good enough for a copy. Let's talk so, about executors who are appointed under the will. The first thing to bear in mind is that if, if someone is appointed as an executor, they don't have to act. An executor is a voluntary role, so the person appointed can actually say no. And what the way that someone steps down or says no, that they don't want to act as executor, is to sign a document called a renunciation. They sign that document, then they can just step aside and they don't have to do anything. Um, a will may nominate backup executors. So then if the first named executor can't act, then the backup executor will step in. Sometimes the executor may not be able to do it because they might have passed away already or that they may be too ill to do it or they, they simply cannot be located. So if any of those apply, then the will is still valid and the backup executors, if there are any, nominated will take over. But if you're left in a situation where the will doesn't appoint any executors or the executors who are appointed can't do it, then the will is still valid. If you need to apply for probate, and again, you don't, we're gonna talk about more about probate in our later videos, but if you need probate, then the, and there are no executors, then the process that you'll need to apply for is called letters of administration with will annexed. That's a long, complicated set of words, but all that means is basically you're applying to the court and, and saying, hey, here's the original will. We still want to honor the terms of the will, but there are no executors. So can you, can you please pick another person or people 
to act in the role of executors. So that's something to bear in mind and that's something you can research. Another thing to understand about wills is that there are a number of situations on how a will can be revoked. Now when your loved one or this deceased person created a will, then a will is pretty much valid until a number of things happen. So here are the ways that a will can be revoked because the reason this is the reason that this is important is that if you have a will, you want to make sure that this will is still legally binding and this will hasn't been revoked unintentionally. That's why understanding the processes on how a will can be revoked is important. So here are ways that a will can be revoked. Number one, creating a new will. So if your loved one created will number one, and then sometime later they created a second will, then it's highly likely or almost a certainty that the second will will automatically revoke the first will. Number two, a will can be revoked by the creator ripping it up or destroying it or showing some sort of intention to destroy the will, such as putting in a fire or something like that. Not too common, but that can be uh, a, a clear way to revoke the will, but it's important. Only the creator of the will can rip up the will. No one else can. Another way a will can be revoked is by marriage. So most states in Australia basically have this automatic provision that says if you get married, any will that you created before marriage is automatically revoked. And the reason that that, that law exists is because marriage is a big commitment and the law understands that some people might have created a will when they're single, may have forgotten about it. So the law says any will before marriage is revoked automatically unless the will that you created before marriage expressly states that this will will be binding after the marriage. I hope that makes sense. So if you want a will to survive or not be revoked by the marriage, it has that special wording in it to say, hey, this will is valid even though I'm married. Another way a will can be revoked or changed is through divorce. So if you get divorced, some states such as Western Australia would automatically revoke the entire will. Other states say during a divorce, the will is still valid, but the parts of the will which apply to the former husband or wife are revoked. So that's, that's an important thing to consider as well. And also in some states, the formal registration or cancellation of a civil union or de facto relationship can also have the effect of revoking a will. If you're in doubt about whether the will is valid or not, contact Estates Plus and we'll happily have a free discussion with you to give you some understanding of whether the will is valid. I hope this video has helped you. Subscribe to our channel for more information about what you need to do if you've lost a loved one in Australia. Thanks.